we present a video on the hysteroscopic removal of intrauterine devices in pregnancy. Intrauterine devices are a common form of contraception. While pregnancy is uncommon, first-year failure rates are 0.8% for the copper IUD and 0.2% for the levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system. Pregnancies complicated by a retained IUD are at increased risk of adverse outcomes, most commonly spontaneous abortion and preterm labor. Removing a retained IUD in pregnancy can improve pregnancy outcomes. Studies show reductions in spontaneous abortion rates to around 20% and preterm labor rates to around 4-6%. to As a result, the World Health Organization recommends IUD removal at the earliest gestational age possible when the strings are visible on exam. However, when the strings are not retrievable on exam, what are the options for management? When pregnancy continuation is desired, three approaches to management include expectant management, IUD removal using a grasper under ultrasound guidance, and hysteroscopic IUD removal with or without ultrasound guidance. This video will present four cases that highlight steps and technical tips in successfully performing this procedure. Prior to the procedure, ensure pregnancy continuation is desired and obtain informed consent. Complications are uncommon, but risks of gestational sac rupture and miscarriage are discussed with all patients. Review preoperative imaging to plan your surgical approach, and before the procedure, we confirm viability and administer a single dose of cefazolin preoperatively. Surgical steps include first performing hysteroscopy without cervical dilation, second infusing minimal distension media at a very slow rate, third identifying the IUD, and lastly, grasping and removing the IUD under direct visualization. This animation depicts the initial steps of the procedure. If the IUD is not easily visible, or if it is known to be located near the uterine fundus, ultrasound guidance is recommended. Ultrasound guidance can help identify the IUD and facilitate its removal in an uncomplicated fashion. Case 1 is a 35-year-old Gravita 2 Para 1 who had a copper IUD removed at 9 weeks and 6 days under ultrasound guidance. Hysteroscopy is performed without cervical dilation. Upon entering the endometrial cavity, the gestational sac becomes visible. Visualization is challenged by extensive mucus and debris that mixes with the limited infusion of saline distension media. A hysteroscopic grasper can be advanced through the operating channel of the hysteroscope and can be used as a probe to help identify the IUD. Once located, the IUD is then grasped firmly to ensure that it can be successfully removed on the first attempt. The grasper and the IUD are kept in view until successful removal is obtained. Case 2 is a 32-year-old Gravita 2 Para 1 who had a copper IUD removed at 12 weeks and 2 days under ultrasound guidance. This case nicely depicts the challenges in visualization posed by the extensive intrauterine mucus and debris in pregnancy. We attempt to minimize removal and reinsertion of the scope to clean the lens. Here, you can see a track is created to pass the hysteroscope between the gestational sac and the lateral uterine wall. The hysteroscope is advanced slowly with minimal infusion of distension media to avoid disrupting the gestational sac. The IUD is located, and again, using the hysteroscopic grasper, the IUD is grasped firmly and slowly removed. It is kept in view as the hysteroscope is removed from the uterine cavity and endocervical canal. Case 3 is a 33-year-old Gravita 2 Para 0 who had a copper IUD removed at 9 weeks and 1 day under ultrasound guidance. In this case, you see that as we obtain entry to the uterine cavity, the hysteroscope is not advanced any further. We then perform a gentle scan from one side of the uterine cavity to the other. This helps facilitate IUD identification without the need to advance the hysteroscope further into the uterine cavity thus reducing the risk of disrupting the gestational sac. This technique is useful when the IUD is believed to be located within the lower uterine segment. It is then grasped and removed, again being kept in view at all times.
Case four is a 37-year-old Gravita 3 Para 2 who had a copper IUD removed at 11 weeks and one day under ultrasound guidance. This case nicely depicts how the uterine cavity is entered slowly and carefully to avoid disrupting the gestational sac, which is now seen here. Minimal distension media is again used to create a track between the sac and the lateral uterine wall. The hysteroscope is angled up and over the gestational sac before returning to the track against the lateral uterine wall when the IUD is not seen. The hysteroscope is then advanced further along the uterine wall. The IUD eventually becomes visible at the uterine fundus, surrounded again by mucus and debris. It is then firmly grasped and slowly removed with the hysteroscopic grasper. Care is taken to retract the hysteroscope laterally against the wall of the uterus to avoid disrupting the gestational sac. To review the steps of the procedure, step one is performing hysteroscopy without cervical dilation. Step two is the infusion of minimal distension media. Step three is identifying the IUD, and step four is grasping and removing the IUD under direct visualization. After the procedure, all patients have viability confirmed. They undergo same-day discharge and a follow-up ultrasound and visit is arranged two weeks later. If all is well, patients and their obstetricians are advised that they can resume routine obstetrical care. The four cases presented here all had successful outcomes. Case 1, 2, and 3 all had uncomplicated pregnancies and vaginal deliveries at term. Case 4 had threatened preterm labor but eventually underwent cesarean section at 37 weeks and 6 days.